Sam, have you got offices? <laughs> uh, rental offices. And offer you free accommodation up to six, eight people for a year. Okay. Tika gave us his offices. We've been here a year. So Tika's actually leaving this building and he's kicking us out. So, where am I going to live now? Tika was quite clear. He said, Sam, the reason I only offered you 12 months in the office is because my lease expires and this is a rental building. So he rented like four floors. It was a big old building and he gave us some space on the ground floor. So um, he said, look, it's a hard stop. My rent ends, that's it. You're going to have to go. You've got to find your own space. He basically pushed us out the nest. But my home's not for sale. We had to go around town and basically see what can we afford, what's out there and what's going to work. So then that's where everything got a little bit frantic. Tom, well, we've got a busy schedule lined up today. Not too busy. Not too bad. Outside the actual office space itself is the only other amenities that are must-haves and important to have. Yeah, so meeting rooms are really important to us. Yeah. And kind of just breakout spaces for calls and stuff like that. Perfect. So we've got a hiring plan, so we know how many people we're going to have. But we don't know how many people are going to be in London. So we don't actually know how much space we need. So if you're looking at a WeWork, and say you get a 10-person office, and suddenly there's 14 of you, you are stuffed. What are you going to do? You can't have more desks. Um, so that was the problem with a lot of the kind of rental spaces that we saw. So fine to put something on the wall, for example, yeah, and then we just cool. fill it in at the end. Absolutely. Cool. We basically traipsed around town and realized, shit, we haven't found anything. <laughs> and we, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. We ended up working from home for a month. So if you have um, drawers or cupboards or whatever, everything else just box up. We leave on Friday. Everything needs to be fully, fully done. Is this everyone? Where is everyone? A more efficient way of doing a head count than this. This is terrible every week. You need to take a register like at school. I was saying to Tuka, look, we're looking at these spaces. This is the cost. We've got all this going on. And he was scratching his head with the new building that he was moving into. And he was thinking, can I fit generate in? He said, if there's five or six of you, you're welcome to come in. And I said, ah, oh, Tika, there's going to be a bit more. There's maybe 20 of us. And he was saying, what? There's no way I've got space for that. If you want my honest opinion, I'd say if you want the mix of location, office, and communal access, Northwest House at Marlborough would be my Yeah, mind. it's so interesting, isn't it? Because really the balance of the payoff is better office in the first location, East Bond Terrace, but it's not quite as hot communal spaces versus really good communal spaces and less inspiring offices that yeah, we were. Yeah. But then he ended up actually buying a whole new floor so that we could come in. But the catch was there was a, about four or five weeks where the office was literally just a building site. I mean, we just had the physical rooms and the white walls and the grey floor. So I chatted to Tuco yesterday. He said that the work is going quite well. He said the office is looking really, really nice. Um, they've currently put up the partitions and like built the walls that they need to to build in the meeting room and things like that. And then we should all be okay to move in uh, the following Monday. So that's Monday 21st. So it was quite cool. We got this opportunity not just to come into a space, but actually to physically create it. So after a month of working at home, this is our new office. So this is the office. Over here, we've got a little chill out zone. We put in sofa, big TV, we've got some plants. And this is just where people kick back. Uh, we've got a Sonos so anyone can connect to it, choose the music we play, everyone's vibing all day. We're gonna get a Nintendo 64 very soon. <laughs> We actually still need to build out this area. Coming around, we've got the fridge. We keep it fully stocked. People vote on the drinks that they want each week. And then coming around here, we've got our phone booth. Um, and this is just a private space where people can take calls in the office. Here, we've got the meeting room. And actually, oh, you can hear the difference in audio as you come in. It's so soft. So we got all of the um, soundproofing put up on the walls. It doesn't look like much, but it made a massive difference. 
And then a really cool gizmo that we added is this OWL. The OWL is a 360 camera. So everyone who's a remote employee for Generate, when they tune into meetings, it means they can see everyone in the room, you can engage, you can interact, and it feels like you're more a part of it rather than everyone huddled around a computer. This little meeting room here, this is a smaller one for four people, a bit more of a chill zone. You can see we still need to get stuff up on the walls. Um, but it's starting to come together quite nicely. I'd like to get kind of a family tree of all of the team, um, images of investors, key dates and milestones and kind of get this made up so it's taking up a large portion of the office. Work is an enormous part of your life. So what's really cool is if you can create an environment where people can do their best work. And what that means is you have to let them blow off steam. It can't just be go, go, go 100% of the time all day long. You need to have the ability for people to take a break, go for a walk, sit down, watch TV, go out for lunch, do different things. Um, so again, we've only got a small space. It's nothing particularly special, but we're trying to create a vibe and an environment where people can have a laugh and kind of speak to one another, as opposed to being cubicles like, I mean, everyone's a person. Yeah, I got my cat. Um, pros and cons of working from home. I think what's really nice is, I mean, to be honest, the mixture that we have now is really nice because it lets people have that independence where some days they might want to work from home, they might need to take a delivery at 4 p.m. or something and, and have life get in the way. The downside is you don't get that ability to mix and build a culture. It's where all of the real growth comes and all of the best stuff comes, which you just can't do in cools. I love the space, but if we, get much bigger, we could well outgrow this office. That's the reality. The thing we don't know though, is how many of the new employees are gonna be based here versus elsewhere. So that's the big question mark that kind of dictates how long we can stay here for. But the future is we'll definitely keep making this look a bit better. There's a lot of work we need to do, add to it in a manner that's gonna make it more fun and more enjoyable to be here. When I started Generate, so I had a rental desk in a communal area in a shared office in Bournemouth. And now what's quite mad is when I walk in here in the morning and I use the key fob and open the door and it's our space, it's our office, it's our team. These are our 16 desks. We've got our logo on the wall. That's really fucking cool. That's really, really cool. It's such a cool landmark as a small business where you've taken something from an idea on a piece of paper, you've brought it to life, it's getting users and downloads, and then on the back end, your team's growing, you're growing into your own space, you're creating your own vibe. So that's what I really love, this, the sense that this is ours and we can do what we want with it and we can make it successful. That is lovely pit patter of rain, isn't it?